Hello friends, this video on unit and measurement part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. Please make sure that you have watched unit and measurement part 1 to part 4 before proceeding with part 5. Well, now that we have discussed the difference between accuracy and precision of an instrument, let us discuss what is an error. Any uncertainty in measurement of a physical quantity is error. What do we mean to say when we say uncertainty in measurement? Why do you think there would be uncertainty in measurement? Let me give you a very simple example to understand why certain measurements are uncertain. It is not that all measurements are uncertain. See this example. Let us suppose I ask you to count the number of people present inside a room. You can just go and count the number of heads and you can tell me, okay, fine, there are some 20 people present in the room. So there is no question of uncertainty in the measurement. Because if you have counted it correctly, the number has to be 20. But if I ask you, to count the number of atoms in a room, there is a big question mark. It is not easy for you to count the exact number of atoms present in a room. So, you might be doing certain calculations and arriving at a value of the number of atoms in a room. Now, when you do such calculations, which involve very big formulae as well as data, you tend to give approximate result and that is where error comes into picture. So any uncertainty in measurement of a physical quantity is error. Classification of errors. Errors are broadly classified into two types. The first is systematic errors and the second is random error. So we will discuss each of them in detail. Let us discuss systematic error. The term systematic, it shows systematic means something which is organized, something which happens very systematically. So systematical, systematic errors tend to shift the result in one direction. That means the actual result gets shifted from its actual value in a particular direction. That is, if the value increases, then it keeps increasing. If the value decreases, it keeps decreasing. I know it might be confusing at this point of time, but once I discuss the categories and the examples, it will be very clear to you. Now, there are certain causes of systematic errors. Now, the first cause is instrumental errors. Instrumental errors, as the name suggests, it arises due to defect in the instrument. For example, let us suppose if the meter scale is worn off at the end, then what would happen? Meter scale, we normally use meter scale to measure lengths. Now suppose if it is worn off at the end, then obviously any measurement which you take will not be the exact value. If you measure it 5 cm with the meter scale, it will actually not be 5 cm because you are unable to measure it accurately from the end. So, in this case, if you see any measurement anywhere you take with this meter scale will come out to be something lesser than or greater than the true value. Now, if the measured value comes out to be something lesser than the value, then wherever you use this meter scale, the value will be lesser than the true value. So that is, so this kind of errors are systematic errors. There is another category that is imperfection in experimental technique or procedure. That means the way you are measuring. If there is a defect in the way you are measuring a physical quantity, even that can give rise to a systematic error. For example, thermometer placed under the armpit measures lesser temperature than the actual body temperature. You must have used thermometers when you fall ill. When you have fever, just try this out. Just try to keep the thermometer under your armpit and take the temperature. 
you would find that the temperature measured when thermometer is kept under the armpit will differ from the temperature measured when the thermometer is kept inside your mouth. Now this difference arises because this is a standard fact that if you, if this is the experimental procedure you follow, that is if you place the thermometer under armpit, no matter what, the result will be lesser than the actual value. So this is also a systematic error. The third one is personal errors. Personal error means something which occurs due to your own mistake. For example, reading a thermometer from below the horizontal line of sight. If there is an error in which you read the thermometer, even in that case, you will get a value which will be deviated from the actual value. Now, now let us see how systematic errors shift the result in one direction. In all these three categories of errors, if we see that the value deviates from the actual value in a single direction. For example, take the first case, that is the meter scale worn off at the end. When the meter scale is worn off, any measurement which you take will be lesser than or greater than the true value. And this deviation will be uniform throughout all the samples. Similarly, whoever the person may be and wherever the place may be, if the thermometer is placed under armpit, the body temperature will always be lesser than the true temperature. Similarly, in case of reading a thermometer incorrectly, whosoever temperature you measure and wherever you measure, the value which you measure will always deviate in the same direction. So in all these three categories, we see that the errors shift the result in one particular direction. So it is an organized kind of shifting. That is why they are called systematic errors. Let us now look at random error. As the name says, random. Random means something that happens haphazardly. These are irregular errors with respect to size and sign. That means they can cause increase or decrease at any part of the sample. There is no uniformity in the error at any place. No consistent effects across the entire sample. That means somewhere there might be a decrease from the true value, somewhere there might be an increase from the true value. For example, let us say there is unexpected fluctuations in voltage supply. So, in that case, you don't know whether this will result in deviation of the actual value. It will be increase or decrease or how it will be because the voltage supply fluctuations are unexpected. Anything can happen. Similarly, the temperature fluctuations. So, when you are performing an experiment wherein the voltage supply has to be constant, if there is a sudden change in voltage supply, you don't know how will it affect the sample. So these kind of errors fall under random errors. So let us have a quick review. Systematic errors means organized errors. The errors which shift the result in one direction. Random errors are irregular errors with respect to size and sign. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.